Hi guys, this is Mike, and in this video you're going to learn how to solve this thing, the 2x2 two two Pyraminx, sometimes known as the Pyramorphinx. Uh, please forgive me if sometimes I just call it the Pyraminx to keep it short. Um, before I go on, let me say that a prerequisite to understanding this video is that you can already do the 2x2 uh, two two Rubik's Cube. And the what you know from doing the 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube will be directly applicable to uh, the 2x2 two two Pyraminx. In fact, they're really very similar puzzles mechanically. And before I go further than that, let me say that in my own learning how to solve this, I looked at a lot of videos and I found those by the Bearded Cuber to be the best for me. I found that he is a very patient way of explaining the puzzle and I like the way he put things, so if you don't understand a word I'm saying, I would recommend you give the uh, Bearded Cuber a try. So, um, yes, with that, with the introductions out of the way, I think we're ready to go further. Okay guys, after a scramble, what we want to do is to look for two pieces that are the same color and flush with each other. Most of the time you'll find that, here we don't, or yes we do, right here. Blue is touching blue and they're flush. If you can't find that anywhere, then just do some more random turns and look again, and trust me, it won't take long. So since we have two blue pieces touching and flush here, we will call this one side of our canoe, the blue side, and what is opposite of it? Um, green, right here. So we will call green our other side. So we will start with the blue and green canoe. And the next step in forming that bottom blue and green canoe would be to put the green triangular piece right next to this green side of the three-sided piece. So look for that green triangular piece, put it above where it needs to go, put the target piece in the upper right, Put the destination in the lower right, and as always, we're going to be concentrating on just four pieces at a time. So here we have upper left, lower left, upper right, lower right. It's a, what we're doing right now is moving the upper right to the lower right. And we can do that in these three simple moves. Right, upper, right prime. And there we go. Green is touching green, blue is touching blue. So our lower canoe is already three quarters done. One, two, three. Three. Three pieces done. This last one needs to be correctly positioned and oriented. So this piece is the blue, green, and red. How do I know it's also red? Because here we have blue, green, we have yellow over here, and red is the only color that's left. So it's already in the right position, it's just oriented wrong. And this happens quite a bit, but since it's oriented wrong, let's just kick it up to the top. Uh, with a simple, with that same three move algorithm, right, upper, right prime, and then put it above where it needs to go. And don't worry about orientation at this point. So this needs to go here. Again, put the target piece in the upper right, the target destination in the lower right, and do that same algorithm. Upper, right, I'm sorry, right, upper right prime. And sometimes you need to do this twice. So again, it's it's back in the right position, but it's still not oriented right. So we're going to kick it back up to the top with a right, upper, right prime. Then put it above where it needs to go with a upper prime and do it again. And the third time will be the charm, trust me. So again, this needs to go here upper right needs to go to the lower right. So right, upper, right prime. And there we go. The third time was the charm. So here is our lower canoe. So these are the same color and flush. These are the same color and flush. So you can see it kind of looks like a canoe. So we are ready to go on to the top layer. Okay guys, are you ready to learn how to do the top layer? Much like the Rubik's Cube, it's divided into two parts. Part one is to position the four pieces, and part two is to orient them. 
And much like with the Rubik's Cube, I like to have a situation where if I can't get all four of them in the right position, then to have exactly one of them in the right position. And sometimes you will have, if you have zero in the right position, then just rotate this top and reevaluate. And if you have two in the right position, you can do one of two things. You can either rotate it and look for a situation where one of them is right, or you can put one of the wrong ones in the upper right. But yeah, let's look for, a, let's see if we have a situation where one of them is right. So I'm going to put this yellow right here where it needs to go, uh, flush with this yellow side of this three-sided piece. And then let's see, let's see if any of the other ones are right. So I know this is right. I know that's wrong. And I know that's wrong. So I just said that if two of them are correctly positioned, then you can then rotate it and then count again. So here, this one is right. And I can tell because this whole blue side is done. And that's wrong, that's wrong, and that's wrong. So when you have one of them in the correct position, put it in the upper right and do the following algorithm carefully. And, be, and keep a laser-like focus on this intersection right here between these upper pieces and the left and right pieces. So again, put the correct one in the upper right and do upper right upper prime left prime upper right prime upper prime left and so this one remains in the correct position and it rotates the other three and sometimes you need to do it once and sometimes twice so let's remember this is the correct one this is wrong this is wrong and this is wrong so that means we need to do it again so again keep that same in this case yellow green and blue piece in the upper right when you do it it could be any other piece and and do that algorithm again upper right upper prime left prime upper right prime upper prime left and that solved it that was a little too easy so let me mix it back up again and show you a situation where the top corners are not correctly oriented. Okay guys, let's finish this up by orienting the top corners. This is a situation here you see a lot where it looks like just one of them is wrong. It looks like the rest is done. But some of these triangular pieces right below this incorrectly oriented piece are also oriented wrong. You're going to it's just true with, with these puzzles where you move groups of pieces at a time that you can't have just one wrong piece. It would be mathematically impossible. So we're going to do the same algorithm that we do with the Rubik's Cube to orient the top corners by taking what was previously our top layer. And in this case, we could define our top layer three different ways as long as this incorrectly oriented piece is among them. And put it in the upper left and we're going to keep doing the algorithm until this upper left piece is right and we're going to be careful not to lose sight of this lower left piece it should be a green triangle until this one is done okay so let's go right prime upper prime right up is it right no so do it again right prime upper prime right up is it right? No, so do it again. Right prime, upper prime, right, up. Again, right prime, upper prime, right, up. Is it right? Yes. I can see this one back here is not right. So that means, and I knew this would happen, is now we're gonna orient one of the <clears throat> single triangular pieces. And I'll just pick the green one arbitrarily. And so put an in, a piece you suspect might be incorrect in the upper left and keep doing that algorithm. Right prime, upper prime, right, up, until you get that green triangle back here. Right prime, upper prime, right, up. There it is. 
um, we have that green triangle back so whoops I'm going to just move this up here temporarily to see if that solves it and it does so there we go the the um, two by two pyraminx is done but let me show you another situation you may come across with orienting the top corners all right let me show you another situation you see a lot in this case our correct half is this red and yellow canoe and we are want to orient this piece and this piece so as before we what was previously our incorrect top layer we put it on the left put an incorrect piece in the upper left and do right prime upper prime right up nope right prime upper prime right up yes that's right so keeping our right side the same move another incorrect piece in the upper left and keep doing it until this upper left piece is right right prime upper prime right up nope right prime upper prime right up okay that's right so I can already tell that this right side here is is has some mistakes but we're gonna again trust that we're doing the right thing put another in a piece we suspect is not correct in the upper left and keep doing it right prime upper prime right up right prime upper prime right up and so we have our blue triangle back so let's just um i can see that we just need to do one more turn and we're done so there we go i think that's about all i have to say about the two by two pyraminx um, again i highly recommend the bearded cuber video on this topic if you didn't understand what i was talking about and let me say that this video was sponsored by my website wizardofodds.com which is all about the math analysis of casino games and i will see you in my next video which will be on the regular three by three pyraminx thanks guys for watching bye